This short training module serves as a refresher to remind you about aspects of Gozar Foglow Stratus products. The underlying assumption is that you have taken the full training in the LMS in the past, maybe via live teletraining, and that you use the product. Gozar has spectral, spatial, and temporal capabilities that far surpass the current Ghost satellites. It's scheduled to launch in March 2016. While the Gozar fog and low cloud algorithms were designed to take advantage of the new capabilities offered by Gozar, they were also designed to be backward compatible so that they could be applied to the current Ghost system and to polar orbiting instruments like MODIS. A shortcoming of the traditional nighttime brightness temperature difference product is that it detects all liquid water clouds located in relatively stable atmospheric layers, whether those clouds are low to the ground or elevated. How do you differentiate between low stratus and elevated stratus when they look the same from the top? The Gozar algorithm is designed to address this deficiency in the Heritage product. In this brightness temperature difference product, clouds around Pittsburgh and clouds near Corpus Christi are depicted by very similar colors, yellow and orange in this case, but surface conditions are very different. Corpus Christi, Texas has a signal in the brightness temperature difference field typically associated with fog or stratus. The radio sound from Corpus Christi is consistent with an IFR producing cloud layer near the ground. Pittsburgh also has a signal in the brightness temperature difference field that is associated with fog or stratus. But surface observations in Pittsburgh indicate a ceiling of 4,700 feet and a surface visibility of 10 miles. What does a 12Z radiothon show at Pittsburgh? The Pittsburgh sounding shows an elevated stratus layer. Satellite data alone cannot tell if the stratus deck extends down to the surface. Here is an additional problem with the traditional method. Brightness temperature difference products give little information in regions where multiple cloud layers exist. Information that is based on emissivity differences of water-based clouds is lost when ice is present in the clouds. In addition, solar reflectance of 3.9 micron changes the character of the difference fields as the sun rises, which occurs shortly after this image. This is a Gozar IFR probability field for the same time as we looked at earlier over Corpus Christi and Pittsburgh and for the region of multiple cloud layers. Gozar IFR probability is skilled at isolating IFR-inducing clouds. It also screens out regions of just elevated stratus, such as around Pittsburgh. It provides information day and night. It provides information even when multiple cloud layers are present, and it can detect shallow fog layers. What is used to create IFR probability fields? The Gozar IFR probability is a blended or fused product. It uses all GOES-13 or GOES-15 imager channels. Rapid refresh model output, daily sea surface temperatures, and static ancillary data such as surface types and surface emissivity are also used. The GOES-R products are then combined using a naive Bayesian model. Satellite predictors differ between day and night. For example, there's no visible imagery at night. Model temperature and moisture profiles from the 2-3 to three hour 13 kilometer Rapid refresh forecasts are used over most of North America. Otherwise, the GFS is used. The fused approach mitigates weaknesses in the individual predictors. For instance, satellite measurements are not very useful for diagnosing fog and low cloud when multiple cloud layers are present. Model fields tend to struggle with depicting small-scale fog events, like valley fogs. The fusion process allows for confident identification of IFR conditions even when one of the individual predictors fails at highlighting the potential for IFR conditions. Once experience is gained with the IFR probability product, it is generally easy to determine which type of predictor, satellite and or model is influencing the results the most. Gosar IFR probability is shown as a percentage. What do those percentages mean and how should you interpret them? If IFR probabilities are large, that usually corresponds to surface station reports of IFR conditions. These values typically mean satellite and model predictors both strongly indicate the presence of fog and low stratus. Strong model predictor means the modeled relative humidity shows that the atmosphere is at or near saturation less than 1,000 feet above the model surface. IFR probabilities from 45 to 75 percent usually occur in regions where you can be relatively confident that IFR conditions are present. That is, in most of these areas, surface observations usually verify IFR conditions. 
These values of IFR probability occur when one of the two predictors give a strong indication that IFR conditions are present, or if both predictors only give a moderate indication. IFR probabilities between 20 and 45 percent usually represent a low confidence that IFR conditions are present. Probabilities in this range can result from a weak satellite signal due to multi-layered clouds, or subpixel clouds, or poorly modeled relative humidity profiles. Further monitor these areas with additional information if possible to further roll out or gain confidence on the presence of fog in those stratus. When IFR probabilities are less than 20%, this is very low confidence that IFR conditions are present. Surface observations usually verify that IFR conditions are not present in these areas. Interpret the IFR probabilities knowing what the cloud conditions are because upper clouds influence IFR probability values. Here, Cirrus clouds are reducing IFR probabilities because cloud predictors give little information where high clouds are present. The dark orange-red areas are where both satellite and model predictors are strong, thus high probability of IFR conditions. The bright yellow region in the center of the Gozar IFR probability image is a cirrus cloud drifting over a low marine stratus dip. The cirrus cloud is affecting the IFR probabilities. For small-scale features, the satellite signal will dominate because the rapid refresh generally cannot resolve small valleys. The model near-surface relative humidity profiles were relatively low in most of this area, except in the west-central part of the image where smooth gray contours show up. The second product produced is the Gozar Cloud Thickness product. Cloud thickness is determined by applying empirical relationships to satellite data. These relationships aren't unique when the sun is low in the sky, so Gozar cloud thickness is not computed in the hour or two surrounding sunrise or sunset during so-called twilight. It is only available for single-layer liquid water clouds located in the boundary layer. The product has been validated. It is statistically superior to the brightness temperature differences as shown in this plot of critical success index. Validation was performed using one day from each month, comprising roughly 1,100 goes east scenes. The CSI is equal to the number of hits, divided by the sum of the number of hits, the number of false alarms, and the number of misses. It is sensitive to the climatology of the event. A separate validation was performed over Alaska. It shows similar results. The IFR probability is statistically superior to the traditional brightness temperature difference product. Model data are provided by the rapid refresh, with domains and resolutions noted on this slide. GFS data are used outside of North America. Stray light issues occur around the equinoxes. They appear in brightness temperature difference products, but they leak into the IFR probability field and the Gozar cloud thickness field as well. You can see a discontinuity in IFR probabilities during the transition from day to night or vice versa. Satellite predictors used during the day differ from those used at night. In general, IFR probability increases during the day because visible data are used to cloud clear, so the likeliness that a cloud is present is better represented in the algorithm. The Gozar cloud thickness product disappears during twilight, but it is available all night and during most of the day for single layer water clouds. There is a relationship between the last pre-sunrise Gozar cloud thickness estimate and the time it takes radiation fog to dissipate. The last pre-sunrise Gozar thickness is the y-axis on this plot. The x-axis is the dissipation time. This method has only been tested on radiation fog events. It can't be used in regions with multiple cloud layers where cloud thickness is not computed. Remember, cloud thickness is only computed for single-layer liquid water clouds. The greater the cloud thickness, the longer the dissipation time. This example over Florida shows the last pre-sunrise scene with a valid Gozar cloud thickness. This is at 11Z. At 1115, there was not a valid Gozar cloud thickness because of the day-night transition. The Gozar cloud thickness is about 1,000 feet, and you can relate that to a dissipation time by the, on the chart of about three to four hours. A little more than three hours later, the fog is almost burned off. It's completely gone a half hour after that. Gozar IFR probabilities can also be computed using MODIS data. 
The superior spatial resolution of MODIS gives far greater detail to the IFR probability and Gozar cloud thickness fields. Individual river valleys are more likely to be resolved. While the GOES-R IFR probabilities from current GOES satellites can usually detect these areas of fog, the, the use of MODIS can provide users with greater detail that can help them better understand where the fog in low stratus is located or where it's confined. This is a case where IFR probabilities from GOES show little signal because the spatial resolution of the small-scale valley fog is less than the spatial resolution of the GOES satellite. The higher spatial resolution provided by MODIS captures the small-scale valley fog, and this can give you an early alert to the development of fog. The better resolution of MODIS data becomes especially apparent as you get up to high latitudes, such as in Alaska. The main strength of the GOES-R fog and low stratus IFR probability product is that it can be used to quantitatively identify IFR producing cloud layers even when multiple cloud layers are present day and night. This slide shows additional product information and training material. The FOG blog is updated about twice weekly, subject to the presence of FOG, and is a good source of extra case studies and up-to-date case studies. This slide shows frequently asked questions and answers. Do you have questions or suggestions? Use the email addresses on this slide.